Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at choosewood.com. It's Wednesday, October 12th. This is The Gateway. I'm Wayne Pratt. Autonomous tractors could be widely available by the end of the decade. Some farmers are very skeptical of a machine that does the work for them. I couldn't do it, but then again, I'm past 60. I I can't see it. Coming up, the mixed reaction to farm implements that don't need a farmer. The accidental shooting death of a toddler in St. Louis has advocates and some elected leaders again urging gun owners to safely store firearms. St. Louis Public Radio's Kate Grumke reports. This was at least the fifth time a child accidentally fatally shot themselves or another kid in the St. Louis area after getting hold of a gun this year. In total, the Post-Dispatch says at least 18 kids have been killed by guns so far this year in the region. Mayor Tashara Jones says gun owners have to do more to prevent these tragedies. Lock up your gun and keep the ammunition stowed in another place. We want to make sure that responsible gun ownership is what leads our communities and and will help prevent uh, further tragedies like this. The mayor and advocates are reminding residents that free gun locks are available at firehouses, police departments, and libraries. The city's public libraries have already handed out more than 1,100 locks since launching their program in April. I'm Kate Grumke, St. Louis Public Radio. An appointed board designed to oversee St. Louis's corrections division will be allowed to operate. A circuit judge has lifted the injunction against the detention facility's oversight board. That means St. Louis will be able to hire staff to investigate complaints about the conditions at the city's jails. Changes to the power of the St. Louis Police Civilian Oversight Board remain blocked. Unions representing the department had sued, saying it violates state law outlining the authority of those boards. St. Louis Community College, Lindenwood University, and Tech STL have received a nearly $300,000 research grant to help study barriers affecting entrepreneurs and workers in technology startups throughout the region. St. Louis Public Radio's Andrea Henderson reports. The grant from the Kauffman Foundation will allow researchers to explore data on the gaps in resources that affect startup companies by people of color. Researchers also will study upward mobility, job training, and diversity in the tech industry. Phyllis Ellison is Associate Vice Chancellor of St. Louis Community College. She says the data also could help boost the region's tech industry and the ability of companies to attract workers. Employees want to work somewhere with a vibrant startup community because they know employees may be moving in and out of a corporate job into a startup community back and forth over their career. The three-year project will begin this fall. I'm Andrea Henderson, St. Louis Public Radio. One of the largest public companies based in St. Louis is keeping its headquarters downtown. Peabody Energy officials made the announcement as part of the city's weekly public safety update. The coal company had considered moving its global headquarters for safety reasons. The decision follows announcements by other companies about leaving the downtown area, That includes law firm Brown & Crouppen, which plans to move to the Hill neighborhood. Television station KMOV says it is leaving next year for Maryland Heights. Missouri's Supreme Court is asking for millions to wipe out marijuana-related convictions. Post-Dispatch reports the $7 million request is part of the court's overall budget proposal given to Governor Mike Parson. Funding to erase convictions would only be needed if voters next month pass the legalization of recreational marijuana. There would be an automatic process for people with past pot-related convictions related to nonviolent offenses and those who were not driving under the influence of the drug or did not sell to minors. The newspaper also says the budget proposal suggests local courts would be responsible for most of the cost. Two candidates for Secretary of State in Illinois are proposing solutions to reducing long lines at the DMV. Mawa Iqbal has more. In the running to replace Jesse White, who's retiring, are Democrat Alexi Janulius and Republican Dan Brady. Janulius, a former state treasurer from Chicago, wants to create an online appointment booking system called Skip the Line. People are paying too high of a time tax just to to access simple government services. Brady, a longtime state representative from Bloomington, wants to divert some of the foot traffic to the DMV to other spaces like libraries and community colleges. It could serve potentially as great hubs for the Secretary of State's office. 
potentially replacing some of the more older, outdated facilities. Also on the ballot is Libertarian John Stewart, a former professional wrestler from Deerfield. I'm Mawa Iqbal. Vehicles that drive themselves may come to farm fields long before they are common on the roads. John Deere is planning to develop autonomous tractors that can take on many of the duties of growing crops. No farmer needed. St. Louis Public Radio's Jonathan All reports the idea is being met with excitement, skepticism, and fear. Earlier this year at the Consumer Electronics Show, Farm equipment manufacturer John Deere unveiled plans to have fully autonomous tractors and other farm implements on the market and in the fields by 2030. The company's presentation included a video featuring Minnesota farmer Doug Nims praising the prototype he used on his 2,000-acre corn and soybean farm. I think the tractor can do a better job than I can do. Autonomy, uh, it's uh, it's going to be a life changer for me. Deere contends a tough labor market for ag workers, wanting to free up farmers' time to do more important things, and better farming are the goals of their efforts. I'd say we've been chipping away at autonomy for the last 20 plus years, really. Ryan Jarden is in charge of marketing large tractors at Deere. He says the equipment his company is developing can not only run day and night without an operator on board, but can also plant, plow, and apply fertilizer more accurately and efficiently is it automates not only the driving function, but basically every decision point that 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 operator would have made. So, and that can include things like adjusting the tillage tool depth or um, steering around an obstacle, things like that. While Deere made a big splash at CES, there aren't a lot of details on an exact time frame on when the machines will be available. And Jarden says that's on purpose. He says this slow rollout is designed to give farmers a chance to process the idea and the reaction is mixed. I couldn't do it, but then again, I'm past 60. I, I can't see it. Dave Busby has a small livestock and vegetable farm in central Missouri near Bland. He's having lunch in a local restaurant after spending all morning on his low-tech tractor. He says he doesn't like the idea of sending out a machine to do the work for him. There's nothing more appealing to me than to go out almost in the spring. If you plow your ground, that smell that comes up, that first spring plow, or to get out there and have your hands on what you're doing out there. To me, that will always be what real farming is. Younger farmers may be more amenable to the idea. Chris Otten farms 1,400 acres of corn and soybeans in southern Illinois near St. Labore. An easier, high-tech way of farming may be more attractive to the younger generation, like his eight-year-old son. But he also says technology can't farm by itself. And to trust the fact that it's going to work correctly all the time, Uh, and be able to sit behind a computer screen, I think that would ruin agriculture, and I think we would see a huge issue in our food supply if we went completely that way. You can do that to a certain degree, but again, there's going to have to be a balance point of where does that stop. Otten says as long as autonomous tractors are being set up and run by a farmer who's invested in the land and not by a corporation's technician miles or even states away, it could be a good thing. Others say autonomous tractors could be good for the environment, by increasing efficiency. Rob Myers is the Director of Regenerative Agriculture at the University of Missouri. He says that could mean reduced use of fuel, fertilizers, and pesticides. They will have an impact in terms of gathering more data that may lead to a higher use of precision application, different seeding rates, different fertilizers, maybe even planting different varieties in places. Even with autonomous tractors, Myers says farms need farmers. Farmers have plenty to do, not just driving tractors, so I think they will keep busy with other things if, if the tractors are autonomous, but we'll, we'll see. While Deere and some other manufacturers are moving quickly toward automation, there are barriers that will shut out many farmers, namely the price tag. While Deere is not releasing information on how much these tractors will cost, industry insiders routinely throw around figures of well over a half a million dollars. In Rala, I'm Jonathan All. St. Louis Public Radio. That story was produced in partnership with Harvest Public Media. That's a collaboration of public media newsrooms in the Midwest focusing on agriculture. I am out for the next few days. Several people will be behind the microphone starting tomorrow with the legend that is Jonathan All. 
Before I go, we remember Angela Lansbury, a legend for her work on the screen and on Broadway. Among her many prominent roles was a singing teapot in the 1991 film Beauty and the Beast. Time as old as time, song as old as rhyme, beauty and the beast. Lansbury died yesterday. She was 96. The Gateway is a production of St. Louis Public Radio, a listener-supported service of the University of Missouri-St. Louis. Music by Ryan McNeely of Adult Fur. I'm Wayne Pratt. Support comes from the Missouri Forest Products Association, saluting Earth Day on April 22nd with an ongoing commitment to help offset carbon emissions with sustainable harvesting of Missouri forests. Details at ChooseWood.com.